Yesterday I downloaded the Starbucks app for the first time and I was playing around with it and I noticed that on this order screen, the scrolling felt very unnatural. Now they had done a kind of a cool header collapse effect when you scroll, but it feels very unnatural while I'm scrolling over that first portion where the header is collapsing. And I realized the reason why is because the scroll container itself is moving up along with the header and that causes it to move out from under your finger. It kind of scrolls twice as fast as it should. And when it moves out from under your finger, you lose that direct connection between your finger and what's scrolling, which iOS is known for, for creating that very natural physical scrolling feeling. So as I scroll, it shoots out from under my finger and I feel like I've lost control as I'm scrolling. Now, if you wanted to fix something like this, using Flinto for Mac is a great way to quickly put together a prototype that demonstrates maybe how it should work which is a great communications tool if you're on the team and you wanted to actually address this and you're a designer, being able to put together a prototype in a few minutes that demonstrates the difference uh, is such a more convincing way to present something like this than an explanation or a static mock-up or even a video, especially when you can hand the phone to somebody and have them try your improved version. So I'm gonna go through, I made a recreation of this UI and I'm gonna go through creating the behavior that creates the scroll effect and first, I'll recreate this faithfully where it has the problem of scrolling too fast. And then I'll fix the problem and show you what I think is a better version. Have you seen any apps that have messed up animations? If you'd like me to take a stab at addressing those in Flinto by recreating them, let me know in the comments. I'm here in Flinto for Mac with my recreation of that Starbucks screen. Now, I didn't get all the details like the photos, but the basic elements are here so that we can recreate this interaction. Right now, this is a static screen, but I'm gonna add scrolling to this group. Now I have a group that's already called scroll content. So I'm just gonna go down here to group options and select vertical under, under group options scroll. Now, if I go to the preview, you can see that content scrolling, but there's a couple of issues. One is it cuts off here at the top, and the other is I can't scroll past the bottom of this footer. So to address those issues, I'm gonna resize the scroll group frame. So it's right up against the header there. And at the bottom, it goes below the footer, but I'd like it to stop right at the top of the footer. And then I wanna make sure that I have enough content size here, and that's this blue rectangle. And I wanna make sure that's just got a little bit of padding below the bottom of the content. Okay, back into the preview. Now you can see there's no gap there when it goes below the header, and it comes to rest comfortably above the footer. Okay, so now we can create the interaction that we saw in the Starbucks app and that is the X and the search icon fade out and the word order fades out as it slides up and the entire header kind of shrinks down vertically until you just see these navigation items and that happens as you scroll. So to create a scroll animation in Flinto for Mac, you can use the behavior designer. I'm gonna select all three of these groups, the footer, the header, and the scroll content and then click behavior. That's gonna create a behavior group around those items and take me into the behavior designer. In the behavior designer, I'm gonna create a new state where the header is gonna be collapsed. So I'll name that state collapsed, and I'm gonna fade out the X button and the search icon. And then the word order is gonna slide up like this, and then it will fade out. Next, I'm gonna take these navigation links, slide them up, and then resize the background of the header up to match those. Okay, now there's the animation. To get from the initial state to the collapse state, it's gonna happen based on your scrolling. So I'm gonna select the scroll group in the initial state, click create link and target the collapse state. Now you wanna make sure that the gesture is set to scroll. Okay, now I'll go into the preview and try this. So as I scroll, the header collapses. So the header collapse effect is working nicely, but you can see there's a gap here because the scroll group, we set the top of the scroll group to be right under the header but now the header is shrinking down and the scroll group is still stopping where we told it to stop initially. So we wanna fix that. Now here's where I think the Starbucks app went wrong. The way they addressed that, and of course this works a bit differently in, in code and I have a suspicion that they might be using some cross-platform framework. Maybe it doesn't handle this kind of thing nicely, but the, the effect that they have is that the scroll group moves up. So the scrolling view actually moves while you scroll it. So I'm gonna uh, simulate that by sliding my scroll group up and I'm gonna resize it a little bit so that it stays 
um, at the bottom of this footer. Okay, let's go into the preview again. And now when I scroll, it doesn't uh, it doesn't show that gap anymore, which is good. It you know it stays, it cuts off right at the footer, even as the footer moves, or sorry, the header, even as the header moves, the content clips off right at the bottom of it, which is great, except watch what happens where my cursor is. It's right on top of the word coffee. Now, as I scroll up, the word coffee is no longer under my cursor. See how it comes out from under? One of the great things about iOS is the concept of direct manipulation. That's the feeling that you're directly moving something on the screen. And when you scroll in iOS, it feels like you're physically moving something. And it's a very convincing effect and it feels very natural. But when you have something that moves out from under your finger like this, it breaks that illusion and it makes it feel very unnatural. Once we get to where the header's collapsed, it does stay put under my finger, but during that animation, it comes out. So that's because, again, the scroll group is moving while I scroll. In addition to just the content inside the scroll group moving, the group itself is moving. So that causes it to move maybe twice as fast. So let's fix this. I'm gonna exit out of the behavior designer for a minute. Let me give this behavior a, a name. I'll call it collapse header. Now what I'm gonna do is select the scroll group and I'm gonna drag the scroll content frame all the way to the very top of the screen. The problem here is now if I scroll, the content can actually go on top of the header. So I'll just move the header on top of the scroll group in the layer list so that it covers it. Now because the scroll group goes all the way to the top of the screen, I'm not going to need to move the scroll group in the behavior designer to keep it lined up at the bottom of this header because it just always goes to the very top of the screen. So let's go back into the behavior designer and I'll show you what I'm talking about. First thing I want to do is reset the scroll group in the collapse state. So remember, in the collapse state, we moved it up a bit, but I no longer want to do that. And so to get it back to how it exists in the canvas, I'm going to go to the behavior menu and choose reset layer. That lets me start over. So this is how that scroll group looks in the canvas. And this time, we don't need to move it up because it already goes to the very top of the screen. So watch where my cursor is. I'm putting it right on top of the word coffee. And as I scroll up, it stays fixed right on top of the word coffee. So again, very direct, much more natural feeling than it was before. And my finger only goes off of it when I reach the top and you get the, the sort of rubber band effect. Now I've got a little issue here where I'm not able to reach the very top of my scroll range and the content here at the bottom is not uh, coming up over the footer. So I'm gonna exit out of the behavior designer and make sure that I fix that. So I'm selecting the scroll group and what happened was my content size got a little bit messed up. So I'm gonna drag that blue rectangle down below the bottom of all my scroll content. Let's go back to the preview and see if that fixed it. Cool, so now I can scroll all the way up and my cursor stays fixed on the area where I initiated the scroll. It doesn't move out from under my finger. It's a much more natural feeling. So that shows you how you can use Flinto for Mac to prototype a scroll interaction with a collapsing header but also hopefully gives you an example of just a detail to pay attention to when you are creating a scroll gesture. You wanna make sure that your scroll container isn't animating as you scroll it because it comes out from under your finger and creates a very unnatural effect. So I think that's a great example of how you can use the behavior designer inside of Flinto for Mac to create an example of how to fix some UI that maybe has a problem in it. I think that's one of the most convincing things you could possibly show someone if you're trying to convince a developer or somebody else at your company that you want to make a change to an app. Especially being able to show the original broken version and the improved version side by side and letting somebody try that, there's really nothing that's going to sell it more than a working prototype like that. That's essentially indistinguishable from the working code, but of course you can create it in just a matter of minutes.